back at the 44th Design Automation Conference in San Diego, California. I'm Brian Fuller, Editor-in-Chief of EE Times. And with me now is Xerxes Wania, who is the uh, CEO of uh, Sidens, a non-volatile memory company up in Canada near Toronto. Um, thanks for taking the time to chat with us. Thanks, Brian. Um, you've been now uh, a go going concern for three, three and a half years. That's correct. Um, tell us where you are with product development, product rollout, sure. all that sort of stuff. Sure. So Sidens, as you know, is a non-volatile memory, uh, embedded non-volatile memory company. Um, and uh, we uh, did consciously sort of went after the truly uh, deep sub-micron technology, so 130, 90, 65, and so on. Right now, we've got uh, a few customers um, and uh, we're rolling out our products in 130 and 90 and uh, soon in 65. So that's sort of the status of the products. And, and you're selling them as embedded cores as opposed that's correct. to... That's Hard you know, IP. Okay. That's right. um, there are a ton of companies, a ton might yep. be a little bit too much, but there are a ton of companies uh, chasing the alternative memory space, particularly Correct. in, in non-volatile memory. Um, how do you compete there? Yeah, there, there is definitely competition. And um, um, I think most of the companies are going after the discrete non-volatile memory market where you're trying to get replacement for flash and so on. What we've done is, and, and then there's another category who's gone for the embedded non-volatile memory, but for the low bit count. So you're looking at a few bits to maybe a few kilobits for analog trimming or some key storage or so on. What we did is we looked at the market and we sort of went after the high bit count. So including the low bit count, but the high bit count but not discrete. So you're looking at a sweet spot between 256 kilobits to a megabit. And we found that there are a lot of companies out there that are looking for embedded solutions to store their boot code or uh, encryption key storage, or maybe want to write these things two, three, four, or five times, not multi-time, not a hundred million or whatever, you know. And that's the kind of market that we're going after. And we just realized that on, on top of that, there's a big demand for low power as well. So we're going low power, secure, reliable, OTP market. So here at DAC, you're looking to make alliances and partnerships for the most yeah, part? Yeah, I mean, DAC's a good uh, place to come and uh, see all your customers from all over the world. Uh, we have a lunch panel uh, tomorrow, uh, on Wednesday as well. Um, so that's that's where we come to DAC for, yeah. It's uh, making the contacts and so on. Talk a little bit about about your technology and how you differentiate your non-volatile cells from sure. somebody else. So so ours is the only um, uh, uh, memory out there that we think is is one bit per cell. So uh, 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 one uh, transistor per bit cell. So you've got one transistor. Um, it's a combination of thick and thin oxide and um, that gives you one memory cell. So you can't really go lower than that, so we're, we think we're the smallest, the highest density um, product out there. And that, that sort of, um, uh, and, and that, that one transistor also works well with the power consumption, so it's the lowest power very high speeds because we use a two terminal device as opposed to most of our competitors are using a three terminal device and the main thing is this is standard logic CMOS process so you're not changing the process in any way so in my experience selling hard IP for the longest time with analog and and mixed signal is if you try to tweak the process the customer doesn't want to talk to you right right so our first thing was do we have a product that does not require any sort of tweaking to the um, standard CMOS process. And we, uh, once you do that, and then you've got you know, low power, uh, density, secure, and so on, you've got a product that is gonna, uh, gonna help our customers go to that next step to integrate larger pieces of memory. Uh, so, you, so you're selling IP now at, at the 90 nanometer node? Yeah, yeah correct? absolutely. 90 is a lot of customers in 90 nanometers, yeah. 65 and, and below. Right. It, 
if I'm a discrete non-volatile memory manufacturer, I'm running right. into some really gnarly problems right. at 65. Right. You, know, you mentioned oxides, they get very, right. very thin. Right. Right. Um, because you're not making the, the discrete device, right. you're in, in a sense kind of stepping back a little bit from that problem, but yet it's your problem. Yep. How, how do you manage that? Um, so actually, it's glad you mentioned the large one. I mean, you're talking about gigabits of non-volatile memory. They would actually be our customer. Uh, they would use our non-volatile OTP to maybe repair uh, the same issues. You know, if they have a bad bit cell or whatever, they would use ours to skip that, repair it, and so on. So really, these these uh, so-called non-volatile memory the uh, discrete manufacturers are, are could be our customers. Um, there's always problems with leakage and all those kind of things that we're very aware of and we design accordingly. So that's, uh, if that's what you were asking yeah. on, on, on that side. Yeah, well, I mean, we're all gonna have some challenges, uh, but we're very comfortable with 90, 130, and now even 180. Uh, and we think that 65 scales very nicely that we'll find out in a few months. Keep your fingers crossed. Yeah, that's right. So Xerxes was the king of Persia. Are you going to be the king of <laughs> non-volatile memory at some point? Uh, I hope so. <laughs> well, I don't want to have the same defeat that he had a few, you know, hundred years ago. So I'll keep to, I'll, I'll make sure I keep my territory. Good. Thanks for taking Thank the time. Thank you very much. Thanks, Frank.